Dictionary.com defines a pond as a body of water smaller than a lake, sometimes artificially formed. We can visit wild ponds such as Sinking Pond Sanctuary near where I live. And we can visit backyard ponds such as this one, just a couple years old. Ponds hold life along the edges and on the surface. Watch those water striders go. Each part of a pond is full of living things, large and small. We can scoop pond water to study creatures more closely. This is a mayfly larva or perhaps a damselfly larva. We always put the water back right in the pond after looking. Here is a dragonfly nymph. Dragonflies live most of their lives underwater as nymphs. It is only in the last bit of their lives that they grow wings and take to the sky. Ponds are beautiful, peaceful, full of drama, and fascinating. And we can learn more and more about ponds, even the same pond, each time we visit. Hello, Wild Riders of Bamaranek. We are here by the edge of our spot, the Vernal Pool. You can see it here. It's changed a bit. You might see I'm in a little bit of shadow because of these leaves up above. The sun is above me, but there are many leaves between the sun and me now. Today, as I approached, a couple of frogs pop, popped right into the Vernal Pool. I wasn't quick enough to catch their picture, and there are mosquitoes everywhere. So as the weather changes, the animals change and the plants change, and what we notice and what we can write in our nature journals also changes. So you can go back and I can go back to anything from the previous weeks of nature journaling and do that again. And what you will notice and what I will notice and wonder will be different. So thinking about Vernal Pool, a body of water that exists for just a short time in spring and then dries up. Today, ponding. We've been learning from the naturalists at Sheldrake that a pond is a larger body of water. The sunlight reaches the bottom. A lake is an even larger body of water. The sunlight does not reach the bottom always. So today we continue learning about this time water creatures and animals again, not at the seashore, but at the pond. It's great to see you and I'm really glad we're back together. Let's visit the neighbor's backyard pond where we will talk about our nature journaling for this week. Hello, fourth and fifth grade writing friends, and welcome to our neighbor's pond. My neighbor has been very generous in allowing me to come take water samples, pictures, videos, and to write with you here today. This pond, when we meet at our vernal pool each week, at my back is this pond. So if I turned around and just walked down, down, down the hill, cross the road, down, down, down to the edge of the pond, this is where I would end up. And you can see, and you may have noticed, that the edge of this pond does not have a lot of tall grasses, cattails. It is a mowed edge. This is a backyard pond. It's a newer pond that our neighbors had dug. They swim here. They enjoy sitting by the edge. We listen to the peepers in our neighborhood. Sometimes a green heron comes by now that never used to. So this is a backyard pond, and there is a lot of life in there. I would like to share with you the work I did in my nature journal this week and invite you to think about ponds some more with me today. In my nature journal, I listened to the Sheldrake naturalists and I drew a pond picture. And in this pond picture, I thought about not just one pond I've seen before, but I brought different parts of different ponds I've seen before into my drawing. I labeled the parts and then I listed at the top some pond plants and pond animals. Let me show you the picture and then I'll read you the, the, the lists atop the page. So for pond plants, so far I have duckweed, cattails, water lilies, algae, and grasses. These of course are producers. They make their own food. Pond animals, these are consumers. They're eating other things. We've got fish, frogs and toads, uh, birds, including geese and ducks, water striders. Those are the ones that go along the top of the surface. Dragonflies, damselflies, bloodworms, leeches, diving beetles, and bees. I saw some bees when I was here the other day. There are some buttercups in the field and the bees were visiting all the buttercups. There's a crow just flew overhead. 
So I, I jotted some observations. I have dragonfly nymphs, damselfly nymphs. They become dragonflies and damselflies. Water lilies are rooted to the bottom of the pond. I drew a little ripple from a frog jump. I said Canada geese start as eggs. Tadpoles turn into frogs. Turtles start as eggs. I'm very interested in how many creatures of the pond begin one way and develop very differently. So tadpoles turn into frogs. Dragonfly nymphs turn into flying creatures, dragonflies. It's fascinating to me how when I was a baby and when you were a baby, you still looked like a person. I still looked like a person. And yet many of these pond creatures have quite a different look from childhood to adult. I decided to research one creature in a little bit more depth. And I went to a couple of websites to do this. I went to the nationalwildlifefederation.org, bugfacts.net, and a nature blog just called blog.nature.org. And I wanted to learn some more facts about the water strider. Because whenever I visit the pond, sometimes I think, oh, I want to see a fish, or I want to see a frog jump out. And it doesn't always happen. But usually, I can count on seeing a water strider going along the surface. So I became curious about them. And I drew one and wrote facts about me, a water strider. I'll read you the facts. They have three sets of legs. They're invertebrates. They have no backbone. They like to live in ponds, vernal pools, and marshes. They eat other insects. They hold food with their two short front legs. So they have four bigger, longer legs in the back. One thing I read said they can hold their food while they fly and eat it. It's eight weeks from them for them to go from egg to adult. This is very different from a dragonfly where they go from egg and are nymphs for a long time, even a few years. They can live up to a year until it freezes. There are over 1,500 kinds of water striders. And they can go so quickly that if their body length is this long, they can go 100 miles in a second. That's pretty incredible. So I just listed some of those facts because I wanted to learn more about a pond creature. And that was the one that kind of grabbed me. And then for my longer writing, and I want to welcome you to try this because this is, this is a different kind of thing. It's a fiction piece. It's an invented pond memory. So certainly I have real pond memories, like the other day when I went down and collected that sample and saw the dragonfly nymph and didn't know what it was at first. That's a real pond memory. This is a made-up pond memory. So it has some fact in it and has a lot of fiction in it. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's neat as a writer to bring those two things together. I'll read you what I wrote. And then you might, as I'm reading, you could choose to close your eyes and imagine your there, what you're seeing, what I'm saying, and you may, as you listen, have an imagined pond memory beginning come to you. An invented memory pond. I haven't titled it yet. I was just sitting by the side of our neighbor's pond, watching the water striders skate along the surface. I closed my eyes, let the breeze blow through my hair, and remembered ice skating last winter. I could see myself falling down and getting back up again, so ungraceful, so unlike these water striders who just glide like dancers. I opened my eyes and continued to watch the ripples out loud. I said, how do you do that? I did not expect an answer, but I got one. I don't know, but I will keep gliding for this is how I find prey. It was hard for me to know which water strider was speaking to me as many were together going back and forth on the surface of the pond. The strider spoke again, and I could see now that it was the biggest one. Do you wish you could glide like this, kid? I nodded. I thought I would like to be a water strider. Well, learn to float in your swimming lessons, and you will have a little sense. But know this, I cannot walk on land. These are six legs made for water. My body matches my life, and your body matches your life. I eat mosquitoes, so being here atop the water surface helps me catch them. Do you like eating mosquitoes, kid? My eyes got big and I shook my head. I was not interested in eating mosquitoes at all. If one thing changes, other things change, kiddo. If you turn into a water strider like me, you will live for less than a year and you will suck out the insides of mosquitoes. The talent and the diet go together. Remember that when you go wishing.
I looked at the water strider's spindly body and six thin legs. It was shaped for its life. I looked down at my strong arms and legs, shaped for my life, said thank you, and hopped on my bike. So the true part, I really do watch water striders. The true part, they really do stay on the surface of the water and they do eat insects. The false part, it talked to me. <laughs> so I mix those two things together. I encourage you this week to go to your go to your drawing of a pond. Maybe list some creatures that you know are pond creatures. Choose one to write more about. And then make up a memory of a pond memory. Maybe related to what you researched, maybe not. I look forward to seeing you again. Happy ponding, happy thinking, continued thinking about nature and the way everything is connected. Take good care. It is evening at our neighbor's pond now, and you and I can hear the peepers, the frogs peeping, and we can watch a leech swim by. There is so much to learn about ponds, from birds to invertebrates, fish to small plants, mammals to trees, all creatures living in the system of a pond. Find a few good animal research sites here. Go ahead, Mamaronic friends, get muddy, get wet, write wild.